Scavenge on. <laughs> Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here and we are back with another Hayabusa swapped pickup truck video and it's been three weeks since they put a video out and let's see what happened in those three weeks. Well, I bought an Arkimoto, a really cool electric three-wheeler that goes 80 miles an hour. I went to my first EV car show in five years and it's exactly as I remember it. After that, I went to your mom's house and after a weekend at your mom's house, I am back on the turbo Hayabusa swap pickup truck and today we're gonna get the wheels turning. Okay, at this very moment in time, we have our brand new drive shaft set in, and I think this is probably one of the smallest drive shafts in existence. I think it's under a foot long. It's absolutely incredible, but I think it's gonna do the job for us. Now, when we bounce up and down, we wanna make sure that this isn't gonna come out of line a little bit too much. What we realize is we very well may have to actually strap uh, the shocks down. So, sorry, strap the axle so it doesn't travel too far and that slip joint doesn't pop out. So. Right now, we're going for a test drive. We're gonna check suspension travel. Joey is gonna be in the bed of the truck. We're gonna go down the road. He's actually gonna record the drive shaft to see what it's doing at any given point in time and whether or not it actually slips out too far. That way we know if we have to make any adjustments to it. Because I guess technically, Joey, we could, not what we would, we could space it a little bit till we got a little spacer. Is it safe? Probably not, but that, you know, if you look around you, not much is safe. So let's hop to it. No, no, you're good. Just goose it going up this so you don't get stuck. Let's do it. Okay. if it wasn't this is kind of the average travel we're going to have for it and if it wasn't popping out i think we're going to be all right man yeah we're good especially once we raise the rear end or trim the fenders front and, oh, do we have to trim the fenders yeah i think that's where the fender flares come into come into play damn it yeah okay well, can't win them all keep moving all right let's go for it okay What, uh, what logo is this? Yeah, it's a symbol. I can't remember what the symbol is. It has the, fi the CD burner. Remember yes. it has the thing and it has the fire yes. up top? See? The data myself. Limewire? Oh, no. Uh, no. It was like a, a burning application. Yeah, it was a burning application. Okay, this is the surprise we want to show you guys. This is the infamous auto shifter that I've been dying to get for this. Uh, Pingle, they saw me struggling and they sent us one. Thank you, 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 thank you so much. Let's open this thing up. This is what shifts up and down. Uh, for the most part, this goes on Hayabusa's on the, uh, the handlebars, uh, but we wanna find a way to adapt this for paddle shifters. Are we gonna have enough time? I'm not really sure. In the beginning of the video, I was kind of showing you guys an air shifter. We really didn't wanna go for an air system because you have to have uh, compressors, you have to have tanks. This just seems like it's the best solution for this and shift happens. So thank you, Pingle. Oh, I thought that said something else. Okay, well. Oh boy. That thing is heavy. Oh man, it's like 15 pounds. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they really want you to shift with this thing, huh? I guess you could say it's overbuilt. Yeah, yeah this is the uh, electronic shift control module. What you have to do when you shift, you can't be on throttle as you shift this thing. This will momentarily cut the throttle as it's shifting gears. And this one here, what it does is it'll give you your I mean, milliseconds. milliseconds yeah. by setting the dip switches, it'll kill the ignition. Once you get it all wired in, you dial in how long you want the ignition to kill. Yep. 
and it kills the ignition as it's shifting. As it's shifting. I think this is going to be so much this fun. This is going to be so much fun. So thank you guys very much. I, again, I saw the price of this, and it wasn't in the budget for the build, but now it's in the build, so thank you guys very much. It's what? It's violent. Okay, at this present time, everything inside of the Wabbit pickup truck is going to come out. We have to start preparing the frame uh, to paint everything. We're taking out the rear end. We're gonna be installing 411 gears and a limited slip differential in there because I'm sick and tired of having one wheel peels everywhere. But as you can see, we started taking the radiator out. The radiator is gone. Fuel cell is gone. Joey is actually welding some tabs onto the intake manifold because we discovered one thing that once the boost pressure starts building, it's gonna pop that intake manifold right off. So we wanna have some tabs that go here and mount somewhere on the frame so that stays in place and it doesn't blow its cover. I'll be taking out these shocks and rear leaf springs in preparation to make this thing look pretty. Okay, the boys aren't here as yet and the bed is painted. Thank you, Joy, very much for prepping the bed for paint. We're gonna be uh, bedlining this entire thing and right now I'm pulling the uh, rabbit out and it's slowly drifting, but I want to paint under the hood. And it's such a warm day outside, uh, we're gonna end up baking in the shop. So I'm just bringing this outside right now. And it has a mind of its own at this point, but I'll be pulling this back to paint under the hood outside, because I don't, this is just gonna go. There's nothing I can do to stop this. All right, so I have one half side done. I think it looks pretty cool. This is very reminiscent of the uh, Mini Cooper that I did a while back. Just making sure it's nice and clean and just uniform, but that's coming along, I think, pretty decently. I'm gonna start painting the front pretty soon. That part is painted. I'll paint the transmission. This is just me spray bombing stuff. This is very ghetto, but again, this is on brand for what broke Volkswagen owners do, which is myself. Thank you. All right, so now we have the truck back into the shop, and the plan is, is we're going to paint the bed with bed liner. I know there's still some holes in it. You're going to get over it, I promise. But we have the whole front end nice and covered up so there's no overspray on, on various things on it. And uh, we should be good to go. Right, Joey? Yeah. So we're going to actually bed line this the same material we used uh, for the side-by-side. -side. And the side-by-side -side held up really well when we were in the mountains and in the rocks, kind of doing some rock bouncing on them. That held up fine. We're going to spray this. It should hold up just as well. We should be good. So as you know, there's another car YouTuber working on a hybrid car with a battery that may or may not be able to be saved. And it's a shame, but batteries are tough sometimes and not all are created equal. Heck, there was a storm that recently blew through here and I found myself without power. But sometimes there's a solid solution, a solid state one. Now, normally these batteries weigh a ton, but the B2000 from Yoshino is half that of the competition and can still power most any household appliances. I was able to keep my refrigerator running so that my Cool Whip didn't spoil, and that Cool Whip it honestly means the world to me. So what's even better is that when we lost power, the UPS responded immediately so that the router, uh, the desktop computer, and the server that has an intense amount of files on it Really, really, really super important files that I could not lose. And I also charged a phone, another phone, another computer, a fidget toy, and several car batteries so that I can go drive to get more cool with if I run out. Now the B2000 is the safest and most portable backup battery out there and can charge from zero to 80% in under an hour. Now this battery has a theoretical max energy density of up to two and a half times that of a traditional lithium batteries, which is a difference that's bigger than the panel gaps on the Tesla. <laughs> traditional liquid LI battery, and look at the ports and display readout. This Beats has a 1,326 watt hour capacity with a watt output of 2,000 watts continuous and 3,000 watts peak. Can yours do that? No, probably not. So head to the link in the description to get your very own and charge all the things you need virtually anywhere, whether at home, 
on the road, in the garage, or wherever your adventure takes you. Now we have to work on the thing that I was dreading for the longest amount of time. Ever since the first day I inspected this vehicle, I knew I didn't want to do this job, but it's replacing the floor pans. As you can see, uh, this is borderline ready to get Fred Flintstone. Uh, the entire thing has shifted to the left a little bit. Uh, this side needs extensive work. Uh, this side is pretty pushed in. And at this point, you might as well just do both at the same time. Uh, there's holes starting to form on this side, as you can see. I mean, that's like all Swiss cheese and I'd rather not have that. Uh, what I wanna do next is I want to uh, cut these lines. Uh, these are the brake lines, I'm gonna remove those. These are the feed lines uh, for the diesel. I'm gonna remove those as well. I'm gonna clean a lot of this stuff up before I make the first cut. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a very simple initial cut first. I'm probably gonna cut around the rust right here, all the way around, and all the way around this side and do the same thing here, all the way around and all the way around again, just to make sure there's still some structural support and it doesn't kind of fall on my head. But uh, this whole thing is beat up pretty bad. It's really a shame. Uh, I also have to get clever how I want to do this. I have to uh, let the entire truck down, move this support arm to over here, somewhere in that area uh, to help support it while I cut the rest of this out. Okay, now we're at day number 26 of doing these floors. I did a little bit more trimming uh, on the bottom area, and then I realized that uh, this cross brace piece has to be removed as well. So I actually was able to get a new cross brace piece on eBay, and uh, they were able to cut it out of a Volkswagen Rabbit. So this is the Rabbit piece right here. Uh, unfortunately, I have some more modifications to do on this. I have to cut these tabs off uh, top and bottom and also separate this brace from the rest of it. But this piece actually isn't that bad a shape. Uh, compared to the other piece that's still in the truck. It's a very commonly rusted out area. So what I have to do is I have to cut this out. Uh, I'll be cutting it uh, one side there, one side there. If I do cut it, unfortunately, there's nothing that's holding the truck uh, side to side brace wise. So I'm actually gonna cut a part of this pipe out, put it here for bracing so I don't really get much twisting. It doesn't try to actually taco and fold in on itself. And then I'm gonna keep going. Uh, replacing uh, this water pump with this uh, block off plate right here. Uh, we're going to use this block off plate to go right there to cover everything up and then we're going to use the uh, Tesla water pump to circulate the coolant uh, through the engine head. This was $45 for some reason. We could have made this. Yeah. If we, just, if we just cram JV Weld in there. Yeah, I'll definitely. Be fine. All right, Joey, what are you working on right now, buddy? Um, I just made this clutch adapter. So before... It looks like a dinosaur almost. Yeah, yeah. it's a dinosaur. Uh, so originally, the sprocket used to sit right inside here. Yep. And obviously that's not going to work anymore with the drive shaft. Um, the clutch is fairly bulky. Yep. And it used to sit out about right here. So we had to make a plate. Get this guy to line the pin up real quick. If it doesn't fit. I know, right? How embarrassing. Right? Oh, you also have to mod modify the clutch rod too. Yeah, yeah. So it was pretty long actually. Mm-hmm. So... Cut it up, made our own. Oh, it's Polish. OEM. Nice job, man. Polish up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Then we'll slide right in. Nice job. Thank you. And I had to make sure that the clutch actually compressed. Yeah. So that was another fun task of getting the actual right measurements. Spent a lot of time on the whiteboard. Hey, John. Hi, Rich. There we go like that. Nice. 
Looks good, man. Brilliant. I there like it. Go. Nice job. Okay, so for this, I had to remove uh, all four batteries out of this setup because I had to grind some of this metal down. And after I ground that metal down, now the batteries are able to fit a little bit better. Unfortunately, these were sticking up kind of far. And now they fit in there pretty nicely. And this is nice and flush with the ground. If it remained too high, what would have happened over time? It would have started chafing as it settled down and it would have likely worn down a hole at the side of the battery. So keeping it nice and snug here is super important for longevity. All right, here we are. Chatty Poo is here. He's the savior. He's going to come save us, and he's going to do some uh, mild to moderate upgrades to this rear diff. But the first thing he's going to do is he's going to fix my mistakes. I got a little happy with the <laughs> plasma cutter. <laughs> I, got, I didn't know how a plasma cutter works, and I didn't know how, uh, how breaky it was. Mm. And uh, I did not. I screwed it up once there, and I didn't really learn much. Actually, I kind of learned. You can see where I was kind of learning, yeah, yeah, but not you really. Came back a little bit on that, yeah. I, I got a little bit better, but still, uh, as I was uh, cutting this, I started to smell gear oil. Uh, so yeah, yeah there the, was, the, these wounds are a little on the deep side. Yeah, so. those are on the deep side. So Chad's gonna weld those and fix those for me, and then he. What are you gonna do today, Chad? To this thing? Uh, we're gonna rebuild this. So we're gonna gut it, get all the gears out, all new seals, bearings. Uh, this is right now, this is an open differential. Yep. So spin one, it's just spinning in the middle. You get the one wheel peel. One wheel peel. So we're getting rid of that, and we're gonna put a posi in it. There you go. All these bad boys. Okay. We're gonna put that in there. So um, you get to burn out with two wheels instead of just exactly, one. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. So a little, little extra bite, and then uh, maybe change the gears? I don't know yet, we'll, we'll talk about that one. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. No more boo-boo. It was a little hot in first startup, so. That's all right. I should call her. It doesn't look that bad. No, it was a lot more silver down there before. Oh, it's just all metal. Yay. Yay, metal shavings. It smells great. Getting so right now, where do we dump this? <laughs> I hope you <laughs> had it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 wow. Oh, did you see that? That was hilarious. Let me see. That's too oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. That's off. I'm at how much better it's going to be now that the brakes aren't locked up anymore. Yeah, this thing was uh, on there. Sounds great. And this is why we do rebuilds on strange rear differentials. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the wheel uh, axle bearing. Axe brings a shot. You? Everything's shot. Yeah. Good thing we didn't send uh, 10,000 RPM <laughs> yeah, through exactly. this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, Chad. How do you like yours? I like mine well done. Um, How about you? Uh, medium rare, please. Medium rare? Okay. All right, thanks. This is too funny, dude. <laughs> this is hilarious. I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Chad, quick question. Mm -hmm. What should the center temperature be? Oh, well, we're, 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 we're hitting sure what? Good. What are we having that right now? Uh-oh. We're getting warmer. We're getting warmer. We're around 250. 250, okay. Yeah, we're getting there. So the middle's still pink? A little pink in the middle. What are you looking for, like 300? We're around 300, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, well, let us sit there for a little bit. <laughs> okay. Oh, we got, woo, got the wings. Ooh, we got the Chad, wings going. Chad, hold on. Here you go. Oh, that's getting hot fast. <laughs> Here we go. Go for it. Line her up. Damn it. Why? Ready? Not going. Well. Mm, it's all the way down. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Yay! I'm helping. No, I'm oh. The Got bolts it. aren't hot, but the carrier's hot, so yeah. as long as I don't I touch the carrier, it. we're all right. Okay. We're good. Nice. I think so. Oh, uh, oh give me a little. 
Give me a little wacky, wacky. <laughs> you know that song? Look, look at this position that look at the position that John has. Whoa! You wanted a wacky. wacky. Something <laughs> flew across the shop, dude. That was a good. One. Okay, so I got one of the floor pans in, and guessing FYI for everyone, metalwork absolutely sucks in the worst way possible. I hate metalwork. <laughs> What we've done so far, uh, Joey went ahead and he welded this cross beam in. This replaces the old cross beam, which wasn't as structurally sound. Now we have a lot more power, horsepower and RPM going through this thing. It's probably not gonna be as sturdy as it was before. So we have this beam in here, coupled with that large beam in the back. So this thing's a lot more uh, stiff and rigid than it was before. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in. Uh, it's gonna go up. Uh, I'm gonna rivet it in and then put the uh, panel bond and the seam sealer on top of it, so it's, uh, you know, twice the safeness, I guess you could say. But uh, time to put this thing in, and then, geez, I can't wait till this thing is done. Okay, so we're almost done here. I just have to finish painting this last quadrant of the floor. Uh, these reinforced bars right here for the floor, front and rear for the seats are in, they're strong. What I have to do next, I have to get the carpet in that we got. We got a brand new carpet for this and I have to trim the carpet accordingly to accommodate those new bars that we fit in there. So I'm gonna work on that right now. After I trim that, I'm gonna start running the wiring harness from the back to the front of the caddy and hopefully we're good from there. All right, so I know a lot of time has elapsed, but uh, John and I went ahead and we started putting in the carpet in. Obviously, we had to make some modifications to the carpet so that it would clear those two reinforcement bars we have in there. But we have to now take the carpet back out and uh, figure out what we're gonna do next for the center console. We, thought, we figured out what wires need to run to the front of the pickup truck and what wires need to stay behind. Anything that requires any input, like turn signals, horn, or for display purposes will go in front. Everything in the back, like the voltage rectifier and things like that, will stay against that wall. Power commander will stay back there, but the power commander information screen will go to the front. So anything that requires input or gives us information goes up front. Everything else stays out back. And right here is about the center line for things we're keeping in the front and things we're keeping in the back. So a lot of this mess is going to go right back here under the seats or uh, back behind that wood wall. All right, now we're putting some fluids in. Look at this Asian vehicles. That just seems a little. You know what color it is? A little racist. Yeah. It's almost pink, like the um, boneless spare ribs. Oh, gee. all right. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> okay, ready? Yep. Oh, it's going down to the level. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. It actually worked. Now it's half. What you doing, guys? There you go. We're just uh, filling working. the system. It is working. The little fish tank pump works. I like it. It even sounds like a fish tank. It does. It's the quietest thing back here. All right. All right, the axle is finished. We have the uh, limited slip differential there. We have the 411 gears. And uh, we actually ran into an issue. We're kind of jump cutting here, uh, but we had to get new axles all together because the prior axles were uh, 28 spline. And uh, the new LSD is, uh, I think it's 31 spline. So we have to get brand new axles. These are upgraded and they're built to handle whatever power we throw at them, even though this definitely cannot overpower these axles. They're meant for a truck. We have all new hardware. We have new shoes. This is pretty much a brand new rear end. All we have to do now is just paint it. That will come much, much, much later. Uh, we also need some wheel studs in here. But for now, uh, He-Man and I, Joey, we're going to hee-ho this thing into the uh, caddy and hopefully we'll be finally done this damn thing. All right, now we're doing some final plumbing. Uh, we tried to prime the pump, and then as you can see, there's a little residue there. Uh, we also, <laughs> there's also another fuel leak. This is John's head <laughs> coming out of the plenum. A lot of leaks, like when you do stuff like this, you have to make sure double, triple, quadruple check that everything's right. We don't have any leaks uh, from the radiators yet Give so time. far. Give it time. Give it a little bit. And we don't have any intercooler leaks yet. We had in the beginning, but now we're pretty good. We just have a fuel leak, which is arguably the most dangerous thing. Now we're gonna take care of that. We're gonna remove the pump, tighten it back down and um, reinstall and just hopefully get the wheel spinning on this thing. Oh, we need a clutch line too, don't we? Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah, we need a drive shaft too. Yeah, 
it's important. All right, so we want the wheels to start spinning and we have this clutch adapter that I wanna tell you guys about. Uh, what this clutch adapter does, this piece we just bolted in, it actually takes the manual throw from the clutch pedal and turns it into a hydraulic line. So I have this uh, hydraulic port right there. And we're gonna run this line on this and we're gonna connect this uh, to the back of the engine. We're gonna start plumbing this line on, all the way underneath the car, going back to the motor, and then we should be good. All right, John, initiate startup sequence. Key on. Key on. Key on. All right, pump prime. All right, don't do anything yet. All right, scavenge on. What? All right, let's uh, let her rip, tater chip. <laughs> First successful startup. Yay. All right, let's get the wheel spinning. So, all right, second test. Hopefully with the dry strap spinning. Scavenge on. <laughs> Okay, guys, next episode, this thing is going to be running with Hayabusa power. We just have to get all the gauges all set, top off the fluids, build a center console, add brakes, and a billion other things. So stay tuned for next week's video. And since you all have been so patient, I'd like to drop another video earlier in the week just for you. I will see you guys later.